Yo, what's going on everybody? Welcome to and welcome back to another Photoshop retouching tutorial. I'm celebrity photographer Chris Cavanaugh and in today's video, we're going to be getting into a male skin retouching tutorial along with showing you how I color grade and get the results I get within my photography. So right now, with no further ado, let's get into it. All right, so the first thing I do when I go into editing an image is analyzing what needs to be done. I already know that within this, I want to remove imperfections within the background, whether it's just little dot spots from the lens sensor, or if it's just different things within the environment that I don't like, kind of like these little indentions within the wall, some graffiti that's in the back. Moving close into the actual image as well, I know that I want to clean up some of the hair, along with cleaning up different por portions of the beard where light has catched different imperfections on the clothing and also just coming along and cleaning up the skin and making it more cohesive within skin texture and tonality. So first things first, let's tackle the easy things. What we're going to do is go over here into the spot heal tool and I'm going to spot heal on all the little areas I see where we have sensor marks, meaning it was dust on the sensor when I was photographing and I want to eliminate that off of the backdrop. So we're going to go and knock that out real quick. Second portion I want to do is just knock out these little uh, imperfections that are on the backdrop of the wall. That allows the image to just have a little bit more detail. I think detail is everything and catching those little tiny spots that most people don't look at, you know, it helps to bring a more presentable image into the feet. Okay, cool. We're going to just change the brush stroke. And also within this, I'm going to be working with my Wacom pen tablet just to get those fine details. I like it because it also works with pressure sensitivity, meaning that I can go in to certain areas that I want to perfect and things that I want to kind of, you know, take a little chill moment on. Uh, I can do it within my keypad. Okay. So things I would use the Wacom pen tablet for is simply going in and getting those fine details within the clone stamp. All right. And I want to make sure within this, I'm going to change the brush hardness as well, because I don't want it to look too cloned. I just want to kind of diminish what's going on and that's a huge thing I like to do in my workflow as well diminish but not fully remove now with something that needs to be fully removed we're going to do that but for the most part I just like to diminish certain results within you know imperfections within the image just so that it looks natural second thing I'm going to do is zoom in I like to work my way from the top to the bottom and I'm going to go right back in with the clone stamp tool sorry the the spot heel tool and we're just going to go around eliminating other little imperfections, whether it's kind of like, you know, straight eye hairs that we want to get out of the image. We can also zoom in a little bit closer to remove those things as well, whether it's smile lines. One thing I will say as well, it's very important to go in and out of zooming in and out of the image so that you can see things from different perspectives that you didn't see from one. Just cleaning it up just a little bit. You feel me? I'm gonna go back out. See what we can make better. I know it's a little, little spots on the beard that are catching more light than others. All right, cool. Okay, so the next thing I wanna do is go over into my actions panel and we're going to use this action from my boy Prince Mason, and it is called the Retouching Essentials Pack. And I'm going to use advanced frequency separation at a, let's say, maybe nine radius. And we're going to click OK, let that render. Head over into the layers panel and select, well, deselect high frequency, select low frequency. And we're going to zoom into the image and head over here into the actual brush tool. We're going to change the actual size of the brush and start moving it around. Oop. Start moving it around in. There we go. Mix brush tool. 
in places that we want to start making more cohesive within texture and tonality. And you'll see as I start to move this around, we start getting better results within those two elements. A big thing with me I like to do is also continue brush strokes in certain directions depending on where I'm moving, whether it's kind of like side to side on certain aspects of the face or if it's just up and down on certain aspects of the face. Another thing that I will say as well for retouchers who are kind of going through other processes of this, like I could have went through the dodge and burn section, is to go in and turn the image black and white. I'll show you that as well. We can turn the image black and white and after we kind of go through this process of frequency separation and all of those great things, if we see some areas that we want to bring out, rather it's in detail or something that's too highlighted, we can go into the dodge and burn section to be able to, you know, mix and master that up. So I'm gonna go over here into the layers panel, click black and white. We're gonna bring all the reds down and what the reds do is bring out every imperfection that we didn't get. So say if we wanted to remove or clean up an area of skin, what I like about using the dodge and burn method is it allows me to go in, perfect certain details and details and aspects of the skin, whether it's discoloration or pimples or something like that. And it's non-destructive, non-destructive retouching, you know, to a certain de degree and extent uh, outside of what you do with frequency separation. But as long as you make it look, you know, natural, you're good. So we're just going to go in and as you can see while I'm cleaning up this certain aspects of this is becoming a more co cohesive. So I'm just going to zoom out a little bit. Oh, we went a bit too far. Let's go back. Okay. Let's do that over. So see as I'm moving this brush around how those details are being diminished and becoming more cohesive within the tonality. Okay, so this is what we got before doing that. Oh, let's go back one second. See how that brought that out? By simple measures of dodge and burn frequency separation. So here's a quick before bringing those details out perfect okay so I like what we have we're gonna go into a full view of this and we are going to go back up to the history we're gonna click a before see that boom we're gonna go to an after I like where we're going and now it's time for us to get into the process I like which is color grading. Before we get into color grading, I'm gonna do a quick sponsor right quick. Make sure you head into the link up below this video or if you're looking at this on Instagram, the link in the bio, and you head over to my Photoshop store to check out my fo different photography lighting diagram presets and actions for Photoshops, along with my books, my eBooks, and also my physical copy book showing you how I get the results I get within my everyday lighting, Lightplay 2.0 and Lightplay are some of my books that I absolutely love. It gives you the detailed breakdowns on how I get the results within my lighting techniques. So head on over, check those out, and I appreciate you for your support in advance. So let's get back into the video. So the next thing we're gonna do is use this Photoshop preset that I created called Sunkiss. We're going to click Sunkiss, and we're going to let that render, and go ahead and color grade this exact image right here. Let me find it. Boom, there we go. Now the perfect thing about this as well is that you can always go into these actions and change the color of it, rather the tonality or you know add things to it, detract things from it. So we're just gonna go into the mid-tones and we're going to add a little cyan, a little blue, but what we're also gonna do is go back into the actual selective coloring I want to play with his skin a little bit more and add a little bit more red within it just to make it look a little bit, uh, little more natural. We're going to play with the yellows as well. And it's a little magenta that's in the jean jacket that I don't like. So I'm going to go over to the magenta section and simply just bring those down. Now, I like the results we got. I think it looks absolutely amazing. But 
what I want to do as well is play with the actual sky. I think the sky can use a little bit more detail within that. So we're going to go over to the object selections tool. We're going to then render over the area of the sky that I want to kind of, you know, play with. And it's going to give me the option to either select the sky or select mic. First, we want to go into selecting the sky and I am going to play with actual the levels of this. So I'm going to go into the image file adjustments and go into the curves. The curves are going to allow me to add contrast, bring levels down, highlight things a little bit more and see how it's affecting the backdrop and not actually the subject. So I like that we brought the levels down a little bit. And what I also want to do within this is go to Mike and we're going to bring highlights of him out being that we detracted light from the in the exposure from the actual sky i want to bring a little bit of you know brightness into him just to like have that pop there we go boom you know it's nothing that's too overpowering it looks natural now the next thing we want to do is go into the watch and this is what i love about this new update within photoshop especially within the object selections tool panel it allows you to go and zoom into a particular portion of the image. You select it. And what I'm going to do is go right back into the brightness and contrast. I'm going to brighten it up a little bit, add a little bit of contrast. Boom. There we go. And then, you know, I don't mind actually adding a little more color within this just to make it pop just a little bit. All right. So we're going to zoom out boom there we go get out of that and i really really like where this image is going it's a little too much saturation so i'm going to bring it down just a tad and where i lack in what it took away from in color especially within the face i'm going to go back into the selective coloring and just play with the red tones within his skin the yellow tones within his skin just to bring that out all right, so here we go. This is a quick before, boom, a quick after. I hope you guys fairly enjoyed this video. If you wanna see more content like this, if you're looking at Instagram, it on TikTok, if you're looking at it on YouTube, be sure to hit below and click the link to check out more videos. Head up to the bio, check out more videos on my YouTube channel. Check out my photography store where you can find Photoshop actions and presets along with different products like photography lighting diagram booklets and ebooks showing you how I get the results in my everyday lighting techniques. And also, if you're looking at this on YouTube, make sure you like and also comment and also subscribe to this channel. I look forward to seeing you guys back in the next video. I'll see you out. We're out. Peace.